Hey there! Welcome to your third video of Secrets. Now before we get started, the Secrets team and I just wanted to take a minute to recognize and acknowledge the crazy times that we're all going through. We here at Secrets acknowledge that this time is really hard. Every single one of us is affected by this. I know my life has changed and uh, we're facing some pretty stressful decisions. We just wanted to say that even though Secrets this spring looks a whole lot different than what we were expecting, we're still here with you. We miss you, we hope we get to meet you sometime in the future, um, and we're thinking about you. Know that we're thinking about you. I just want to remind you all to take some deep breaths. We think you're awesome and resilient. We're hoping that you find some joy in these videos and uh, remember it's important to smile during these tough times and we're all going through bad days and good days, and no matter what, we're in it together and we're gonna get through this. And uh, eventually, we'll all have a, a brighter future ahead of us. You guys are awesome. Keep up the great work and we'll get through this together. All right, let's get into some secrets. So don't forget your journal and a writing utensil. Sit back, relax, and here's Huckleberry with a review from lesson two. Hi guys. So before we start with lesson three, let's do a quick review of what we learned last time in lesson two. So lesson two's secret was all about energy. Remember, the action for energy goes like this. The sun is the source of energy for all living things. And we learned two vocabulary words that I want to remind you of real quick. So the first one was this big long word that starts with a P called photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is how plants make their energy. And they need three things to do this. They need the sun, they need H2O or water, and they need CO2 or carbon dioxide. And then they take these three things together, there's a chemical reaction that happens, and then they're able to make sugar that they use for themselves, and O2, or oxygen, which they give out, and that's what we breathe in. And remember that we breathe out the carbon dioxide that they need. Awesome, so that's photosynthesis. And then we also talked about food chain. And Steelhead showed you that cool activity of the water or energy being passed down the food chain through the different costumes, the different animals. Um, so a food chain is basically a group of organisms that are passing energy. And there's three kind of groups of organisms that we think of when we uh, make up a food chain. We have this energy that's getting passed from the sun goes directly to the producers, right? And this is through photosynthesis. And that energy gets passed to the consumers who have to eat to get their energy. And then finally, it gets cycled to the decomposers. And those are like the invertebrates, like the bugs, um, the fungus, the bacteria that are in the soil that break down dead stuff and turn it into nice, nutritious soil. So that's a little bit about last week. I think we're ready to move on and begin lesson three. Let's go. I have a problem. A really big problem. A problem that I really don't want to admit. And I really don't want Huckleberry or Steelhead to know. But I think I forgot the secret. I have no idea what the secret is or where it is. And this is a really big deal because this whole video depends on us knowing what the secret is. So I'm kind of freaking out here. I, don't, I really don't know what to do because, here, we'll go together. Okay, so I've put all of the past secrets um, in the same container uh, and I brought it home because uh, I had to bring the, you know, the secrets home in order to do the videos, so they're not, it's not in here. Okay, I'm in our gear room because I'm racking my brain here. The one thing that we've really been doing lately is organizing. Maybe I had the secret already, but 
I misplaced it. So let's see. Is it in this helmet? No, not in there. Costume bin. That's a nice little hair piece. There. It's not in my wetsuit. Okay, I just lied. We haven't been organizing at all. The only thing we've really been doing is making cookies and eating ice cream. So, I'm gonna look in the freezer. All right, we got the ice cream. Yum. Caught, red-handed. The secret in the freezer. Okay, so relationships. Everything is connected, nothing lives alone. Relationships. Everything is connected, nothing lives alone. So we got a pink R right here. This relationships will go right under the pink R. So the action, because with every secret comes an action, the action for today goes like this. Relationships. Everything is connected. Nothing lives alone. All right, let's do that one more time. If you're not already doing it with me, stand on up. Let's stretch out those arms and let's do it together. Ready? Relationships. Everything is connected. Nothing lives alone. All right, let's do it hip hop style. Relationships. Everything is connected. Nothing lives alone. Word. Hope you're doing these secrets actions with us. You're supposed to be doing these too. Be free, my seeds. It is time for you to plant yourselves and prosper. Grow and be trees. Come on now. Grow. Oh no, nothing's happening. Silly tree, that's because your acorns are too close to you. They don't have enough room to grow. Oh no, 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 no. Whatever shall I do? I can't run or walk around to spread my seeds. And if I can't spread my seeds, they can't grow. And if they don't grow, I'm a failure as a tree. I'm doomed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, shh. Uh, they're, they're there. Uh, I have an idea. I can help you out. Really? That would be wonderful. How would you do that? Uh... I, for, I forget. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. For a small fee, I will taste your acorns, take your acorns, and bury them far, far away. Taste them or take them? Take them. Oh, that sounds too good to be true. What's the fee? A fee? I, I mentioned a, f a fee? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I will bury your acorns, but then I also get to eat them. Hmm. I need this squirrel's help to, to spread out my acorns, but I don't want the squirrel to eat all my acorns. Then again, the squirrel seems pretty forgetful. The squirrel will probably forget where he buried most of the acorns. And if the squirrel forgets where it buried the acorns, then the squirrel won't eat them. And if the squirrel doesn't eat them, they're growing to trees. Perfect! You got yourself a deal. Thanks for holding me out. Oh, oh. These acorns will be so delicious in the cold winter months. I can have acorn sandwiches, acorn soup, acorn crackers, acorns and jelly, macaroni and acorns. Hmm. Did I already hide one in that desk? Uh, I, can't, I can't remember. Hey, good idea. I should do that too. But that tree already gave the squirrel all the acorns. I know. I'll just steal some and hide them somewhere. Get your mangy paws off my acorns, you ruthless rodent. Those are mine! Not anymore. Finders keepers. Nana nana boo boo. That's not... Ha! These two squirrels are too busy competing to notice me, and I'm so hungry. 
One of them will be a perfect snack for a hungry coyote like me. Watch out! Watch out! Here comes the coyote! <gasps> delicious. A chocolate covered squirrel will be great for dessert. Now, where did that other squirrel go? Don't look at me! I'm a tree! Me too! No squirrels here! Hmm. I'll go try the next classroom. Wow, that was sure another fun skit. Thank you, River Otter, and your friends for helping out. All right, so we're going to zoom in today on that skit for today's lesson and take a look at the different relationships that were happening between the characters. So let's start out with the first two characters that were on stage. We had the oak tree and we had the first squirrel. We're gonna call that one squirrel number one. And what was going on there? Think about that for a minute. We had this tree that was giving off these acorns, but it needed some help, right? Squirrel number one offered some help by spreading out the acorns for the tree, but the catch was that he also got to eat some. So both the tree and the squirrel were getting something positive or something good out of their relationship, right? The squirrel was getting some food and the tree was getting its seeds spread so that it could make more trees. So we called that type of relationship a helping relationship or a mutually beneficial relationship or you might have heard the word symbiotic before so two organisms are helping each other out in some way so think of some other examples of a helping relationship in nature hmm actually on the secret paper today that river otter hung on to the banner there was an example and that was of i believe it was a flower and a butterfly and they're helping each other out because the butterfly is helping to spread the pollen for the flower so that it can reproduce, but the butterfly is also getting kind of a snack at the same time. Pretty cool. Okay, the second relationship that we had in the skit was between squirrel number one and that second squirrel that came on stage, squirrel number two. And what were they doing? They were chasing each other all around and trying to eat all of the acorns. Right? So they were doing something that we call competing. And if you guys have ever played on a sports team before or on any sort of team where there's one team going up against another team, that is competing or competition, right? You might even call your game or your match a competition. So these two squirrels were competing over food. So competing happens all the time in nature. When different organisms are trying to get something to survive and they might um, be competing or try, like sharing that resource with another organism. So some other examples of things that organisms might compete over. Um, food is a huge one. Also territory or space. Um, oftentimes big mammals might compete over space like mountain goats. Like if you've ever seen two mountain goats like butting heads, that's because they might be competing over territory or they might be competing over a mate. That's another thing that organisms often compete over. And remember that organisms aren't just animals, right? They can be plants. And plants can also compete over the resources that they need to survive. Like look at a forest. Um, trees aren't all the same height, right? But all trees need sunlight to grow, like we learned last week. So trees might be competing by trying to reach as high as they can to get as much sunlight as possible or have really big leaves so that they can soak up a lot of sun in one leaf um, by having a lot of surface area. So plants can compete too. They can also compete for water by spreading their roots out deep underground. Um, but they don't really need to compete for CO2 because there's a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Awesome. So both plants and animals compete in order to survive. 
Okay, let's think of that last relationship in the skit. We had squirrel number two and <gasps> the coyote. Ah! Oh man, so what was happening there? The coyote came in and was sneaking up on the squirrel and wanted that tasty snack. Oh man, and he chased squirrel number two off of the stage and I think we all know what happened there. Yeah. So a predator-prey relationship is between the predator or um, an animal that wants to hunt and kill another animal for food and prey, which is the one that they're eating, right? So in this scenario, the coyote was the predator and squirrel number two was the prey. And predator-prey relationships happen a lot in nature. Um, so let's think of a few other examples. Maybe in the ocean, a shark is a predator that goes after um, smaller fish or seals as prey. Or in the video last week, um, Steelhead showed us a great example of a predator-prey relationship between the spider and that other little insect that it was um, eating that it caught in its web. So the thing about predator-prey relationships is it has to be between two animals because sometimes I think of the example of like a cow eating grass and that's really not predator prey. A cow isn't really a ferocious predator, right? Because in order to be a predator, like to hunt, um, your prey has to be able to run away and grass can't run away, right? So take a minute and think of your own example of a predator prey relationship. All right guys, that's it for me for lesson three. And without further ado, I'll send it on to Steelhead for some activities. Hey, Steelhead Jones, dropping in for more secrets. Ah, uh, hope you all are still hanging in there. Well, your question from last week was to try to think of an organism, something living, that doesn't get its energy from the sun. Anybody able to come up with something? I'll give you the answer. There are organisms at the very bottom of the deepest oceans that don't primarily get their energy from the sun. They get their energy from geothermal vents. So basically underwater volcanoes. So at the bottom of the ocean, there are places, little vents, little areas where heat from the center of the earth comes up through the ocean floor. And some, uh, some of the organisms living down there get their energy that way. But most organisms are getting their energy from the sun Plants are for sure um, getting most of what they need from air and water, okay? Not from soil. They're getting most of their energy from the air, so sun and carbon dioxide, and water, just like the rain we have right now. Okay, our activities this week, a little different. We don't have any props this week, okay? So our activities, first one, we're gonna go outside or look out a window or you can think from inside and uh, we're going to explore how everything is connected. So I'm just right outside of my house. I'm gonna go walk around my house and look to see if I can find ways that things are connected. How is one thing affecting something else? So let's see what we can find have some flowers here. We saw that spider last week, right? That spider was waiting for the pollinators, waiting for those insects to come along and eat some of the producer. And then that spider was able to get its food as well. Another way everything is connected is this rain. The rain is allowing these plants to photosynthesize, giving them what they need. That rain 
along with the sun's energy and the air then get converted into sugar energy the plant can use then animals come eat the plant and uh, imagine if the rain was so polluted that it became acid rain all right acid rain happens when there's so much pollution in the air that that pollution hangs on to the dust particles in the air well when precipitation or water is falling the water droplets form because they wrap onto the dust well if that dust particle has so much pollution in it that raindrop can turn into acid rain that is not good and that will affect how other things are growing so it will affect these plants and that will in turn affect the animals eating it I want you to think about how you might be connected to everything where does your food come from where does your water come from how does that connect you to other things other living things how is the Sun connected to me how am I connected to worms check this out here here's a plant that I'm connected to right here this little white flower this little white flower has this nice big green leaf well watch this I can take that leaf and eat it that's a cool connection that's delicious too now don't go around eating plants if you don't know what they are I know what this one is I know it's edible it's called miners lettuce another challenge for you your other activity is I want you to find all three relationships that we talked about in the lesson you're gonna find a helping relationship a competing relationship and a predator prey relationship right over here I have found a competing relationship what I have found is our state flower okay so this plant right here this is Oregon grape it grows these yellow flowers like this there's state flower well right next to it I have found some Himalayan blackberries okay Himalayan blackberries are an invasive species invasive means that it's not from the area it comes there and causes harm so these Himalayan blackberries are not from Oregon they don't belong here we do have blackberries that are native here these Himalayan blackberries don't belong here and and they're invasive because they're causing harm it's not just that they don't belong there are plenty of species that aren't native to Oregon but they are here and they belong because they aren't causing harm these Himalayan blackberries these grow like crazy and their fruit which is very delicious has thousands of seeds so it's very easy for them to spread their seeds around and their root system is really strong in fact you can cut a Himalayan blackberry you can cut it down but if you leave it laying on the ground that cut portion will just start growing new roots so these plants are competing this Himalayan blackberry is competing with this Oregon grape okay now to find our next relationship I decided to climb up into this big tree here I'll give you a look nice big oak tree <laughs> all right found a helping relationship and oak trees create acorns then animals like squirrels come along they take these acorns and they bury them so now I'm gonna show you a spot where they've buried some acorns okay look what I found here looks like the squirrels are digging underneath this rock and I bet you they're stashing away some acorns down there the other cool thing about oak trees 
is that they're probably the most important tree for wildlife because they have these big branches that fall off and leave behind cavities or a big hole in the tree. And those big holes in the tree, those big holes in the tree provide a spot for animals to move in. Maybe a woodpecker or a raccoon or an owl or a squirrel or a bat or insects. So oak trees are not only providing food, they're also providing shelter for all sorts of organisms. We have another little oak tree growing up right here next to the other big oak tree. There's the big oak tree that I was just in. So the squirrels are helping out the tree by spreading the seeds around. The tree is helping the squirrels by providing food. Same with the berries. Right? All those bears eat the berries and spread those seeds around so the plant gets its seeds spread, the bear gets some food. Now to find a predator-prey relationship takes some patience. So what I'm going to ask you to do, if you're able, I want you to find a spot outside. And you're just going to sit there silently and still for a couple of minutes. And you're just going to observe. You're going to watch what's going on. So I'm gonna sit back here on this rock and I'm gonna watch these trees because my guess is that some kind of a hawk or something will eventually appear on those trees or somewhere flying around looking for an animal to eat. So I might not actually see the predator eat the prey, but I'm looking for a predator and then looking for the prey that it might be eating. Um, the predator could be a bird, maybe it's a raccoon, maybe it's a fish, maybe it's a frog, maybe it's a spider or a dragonfly. Did you know dragonflies are actually the most lethal predator? They're the best predator in the world because they catch about 90% of the prey that they go after. Dragonflies are predators, crazy, ruthless predators.